So I was really close to buying a Canon 1DX Mark II just for its capability of filming 120 frames a second. Okay, so there are other cameras that film at 120 frames, but the 1DX Mark II had the best feature set, in my opinion. Basically, the, the output is really, really high quality video. I was really impressed with that camera. Obviously, there's other YouTubers, video makers that are big fans of that camera. You see it on YouTube if you follow uh, the filmmaking category at all. But it was really hard to justify an extra $4,000, especially when the software that I use has built-in functionality to turn 60 frames a second into 120 frames a second. So the footage you're looking at was filmed at 60 frames a second, which means I can slow it down as far as 40% speed and still retain that smooth slow motion look. But if I want to go slower than that, say 20%, like I could do with 120 footage, you can see that it looks stuttery because there aren't enough frames to retain that smooth slow motion look. In fact, if I go into Premiere Pro and move the playhead frame by frame, you'll notice that there's only movement every other frame. But if I right click on that clip and go to speed duration, I can drop down next to time interpolation where it says frame sampling and pick optical flow. Hit OK, render that out, and you'll notice when it plays back, no more choppiness. It's perfectly smooth. And we're still playing a 60 frames per second clip at 20% speed. If I go back to the timeline view and move that playhead frame by frame, you see that there's movement every single frame. Premiere Pro has filled in all the blanks, adding frames where there were none before. So you've basically literally turned 60 frames a second into 120 frames per second. You can see that the results are fantastic. Optical Flow does a great job of letting me slow that down. It looks like it was filmed at 120 frames but I did want to do a comparison against actual 120 footage. So I've got a couple of GoPros that both film at 120 frames per second. I'm gonna film at 60 frames on this one and 120 on this one. So this is gonna give me a good way to test 60 frames with Premiere Pro's optical flow compared against an actual 120 frames with basically the same camera. So here's a clip of our subject running, both cameras. Here's 40% speed. Same clips, no effects added, and here's 20% speed. One filmed at 60 frames with optical flow added, and the other filmed at 120 frames. And the question is, can you tell the difference? One more time before I put on the labels, can you see the differences? All right, so looking closely, you might have noticed some warping or artifacting going on with the 60 frame slash optical flow clip, the one on the left. So framing through that, you can see a couple of things. Like it looks like her knee is kind of pushing the snow right here. There's some warping going on there. And right here, it looks like her hair is forming just a little bit early, like Premiere is getting it confused with the telephone line. And then when she passes the sun, you see her nose jump around on her face. And then if you look at the ground or, or some of the overall parts of the picture, like the snow, the, the moisture on the ground, or the trees in the background, you can see that the image is just a little bit softer in all of those in-between frames, the ones that Premiere created. And uh, this video is probably an extreme example because there's a lot of movement going on, so Premiere Pro has more work to do. But even if we go back to the DSLR clip, when she goes under a shadow, Optical Flow has trouble with this seam on her jacket. It looks like a plucked bass string. So you can see that optical flow struggles with those areas of overexposure. It doesn't quite know what to interpolate, but when the lighting is even and it doesn't have any really complicated tasks to overcome, it's very, very capable. Now, if you really want to ramp up your slow motion capability with lower frame rate cameras, there's a plugin called Twixter made by a company called Revision FX that you can download that does an even better job than optical flow. So here's that same clip with Twixter applied instead of optical flow, and you can see that there's no more problem with that seam on her jacket in the shadow. Excuse the big X, I don't actually have licensing for Twixter. I just wanted to download it and show it as a comparison for this example. So if you're curious, I hope that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you uh, some new capabilities with the cameras that you already have that hopefully shoot 60 frames per second. Yeah, there you go.